Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Amanda. I know this is only my second video. I do a lot of my stuff on Instagram, so if you don't follow me, I'll go ahead and put my handle right here. It's at Amanda K. Ambergy, and I'm a flight attendant. I absolutely love my job. And I get a lot of people ask me, how exactly do you become an airline flight attendant? Well, I'm about to tell you how. So the first step is obviously to apply. Um, I always tell people that if you're ever thinking about being a flight attendant, just go ahead and pull the plug, apply, because the application process is very, very long. <laughs> I personally like the way that the application process goes, and I'll tell you why in just a second, but if you're thinking about it, if you ever thought about being a flight attendant, go ahead and apply. Um, most airline, major airlines, you can actually go onto their website, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there is a careers tab. It will tell you if they're hiring, what positions they're hiring for, typically what states and areas of the world they're hiring for, so it's an amazing job. Um, so once you figure out what major airline you want to apply to, or a few that you want to apply to, that is a long interview process and an application process. And typically the first step is that you're gonna submit your resume. I definitely would recommend centering your resume towards customer service experience. If you don't have a lot of it, that's fine. Um, a lot of people in this day and age think that, oh, if I haven't been a flight attendant before, there's no way a major airline's gonna hire me. And honestly, that's not true. Go ahead and center your resume towards customer service. So even in high school, if you were ever a waitress, that's customer service. If you were ever a babysitter, that's customer service. Um, you're just angle it towards that and make sure your objective statement is specific to that particular airline. So say you wanted to apply to a few airlines, I would make your objective statement centered, make three resumes and save them in your computer as airline one, airline two, airline three, and go ahead and put that airline in your objective statement. That title of that airline, it will make it more personable and the people reading it will be like, that jumps out to me. So definitely make it customer service oriented. The company I work for loves individuality. So anything that makes you stand out. Um, honestly, the resume um, is obviously gonna get your foot in the door, but that's not gonna define if you get the job. Um, specifically related into the fact that when I applied to the airline that I work for, over 250,000 people applied. That's a lot of resumes. They all start to look the same. The objective statements start to look the same. Be different. Show your personality and just make something about you stand out because if that one thing stands out, then hey, you may get the um, second interview, the email for the second interview. The second part of the interview process is a, let's see, what was it? It's a quiz. It's a personality assessment. And basically, they just want to see how you handle situations, if you're right brain or left brain, the way you think, if you're going to be a bit good fit for the company based on what the company does have in mind and what their mission statement is and all that. Then if they, they like you from there, um, the company I work for, we had then have a video interview. There's no one on the other side of the camera. It is a pre-recorded questions, um, five to ten questions asking you um, basically to answer questions. And how you answer those is imperative. Um, each airline wants you to answer things in a different method. Um, it could be the STAR method. This, there's just tons of different methods. So to go ahead and research what you want, um, what airline that is for you, and go ahead and do some research. I recommend going on to the website Glassdoor. I'll put the link in the description box below. Um, that you can type in any airline and or just flight attendant in general. It will tell you what the starting salary is, what the benefits are like for that particular airline, what the interview process and application process is like, and questions that have been asked in the past. So it's five to 10 questions on the video interview. If they like you from there, then you'll go ahead and get another email saying, congratulations, we really want you to move on to the next process. The next process for the company I work for just happened to be a phone interview. On the phone interview, it was actually a really long conversation. Um, it was 45 minutes to an hour long. I do recommend having your resume in front of you um, so that you can be factual and I'm a very factual person, 
in my day-to-day -day life, so my mom recommended having it in front of me so that I can be specific as to dates because remember, when you are interviewing for a job, even if you are one day off, that can be misconstrued as lying or um, not telling the whole truth. So having the uh, um, your resume that you submitted to that particular airline in front of you is going to be really awesome just so that if you're going to be a little bit nervous, you can go back and look at it and say, hey, okay, I said this exact date is when I graduated from college. These are the awards I um, was given. This is my customer service experience, and this was my GPA. All of that's going to be in front of you, so you're not. it's going to take a little bit of weight off your shoulders. If they like you from then, there, you're going to get a face-to-face -face interview. Now let me tell you, this seems like a lot, I know. However, I really like the way that the company I work for did the interview process, and major, all the major airlines kind of have the same interview process now, um, just so that it's streamlined. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you do at the face-to-face -face interview, because... One, the company I work for doesn't want us to tell. And two, I worked really hard to get to the job I have today. And I don't want to make it too easy for you, but I will tell you that if you go into Glassdoor, it will tell you everything you ever needed to know. Like I said, once I got to the face-to-face -face interview, I wasn't scared. I mean, I normally don't. I'm a realist, so I normally don't get really scared in general. I just get um, maybe a little bit nervous butterflies a little bit, but the way that the company I work for did the interview process, by the time I went to the face-to-face, -face, it didn't even feel like an interview. I felt like, hey, you know what, if I'm meant to have this job, I'm going to have it. I've talked to five or six different people at this point. Hundreds and hundreds of people have probably seen my application. If I'm meant to be here, I'm going to be here. And if it's in my cards, it's in my cards. If it's not, that's okay. We'll rethink it and reevaluate. Re um, but yeah, having having a good objective statement on my resume that I could kind of incorporate into my whole application process and interview process was something that really stuck with me. Um, doing my research, what the company stands for, so that if they ask me a question that I maybe didn't have an answer that um, personal experience uh, that I could incorporate into the question they asked me, if I didn't have an example, I knew what the company stood for, so I could say, hey, you know, I haven't experience this yet because I'm only 24 years old however if I ever did this would be how I would handle the situation because I know what one they're looking for what they stand for and kind of just what I would do so that was really awesome now um, you're gonna hear mixed things as to if they're gonna hire you on the spot or not and that's because it's based on numbers how many people they want to hire um, how many people of a certain, like I said, in the airline industry, they look for two things, uniqueness and diversity, and that's an individuality. That's basically all one thing. They they need diverse people, and so they have certain numbers and maxes and minimums that they need to meet. So whether you get hired on the spot or not is going to be based upon the interview, the interviewer, um, how many people they've already hired, where other people are at in the process, what, how far the interview process is long, if it's close to the closing window, opening window, whatever. Um, for me, I did get hired on the spot. It was, it was so, I was shocked. I did not think that they were going to hire me on the spot. I did, honestly, I didn't even know that they did that because there were so many people there. Um, so they hired me on the spot. I filled out all my paperwork and then I was, but I just had to wait for my drug test and everything to come back. And then once I did come back, I was set and ready to schedule training. Um, I did have previous air, airline experience. So I was very familiar with the airline world, um, the lifestyle I was about to jump on into and how training would go for the next eight weeks. So I was very fortunate and aware of what I was getting myself into. I am kind of going to make this uh, YouTube series, if you will, um, split up so that this one's going to be about the interview process and then I'm going to go into one about um, training and how that was for me, what it's like, how to be a new flight attendant, what some tips, tricks, and how to pack. Um, I'm a light packer, so things like that. Um, a, a few of you guys on my Instagram wanted to know my craziest stories, so I'm going to tell you all about that, but this one was mainly just about the interview process. Like I said, go on to Glassdoor, just look in, do your research. 
if you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, show your personality. That's a huge one. Oh, one thing I did want to touch on. A lot of people want to know what you wear to the face-to-face -face interview, what you wear on the video interview. And honestly, I was raised my, like, I played volleyball and I always had my hair and makeup perfect for volleyball. I remember even my mom um, would come to my volleyball games. At, at, they would start at, like, we'd have to leave the house at like 5.30 in the morning sometimes on the weekend. And she had her high heels on and her cute outfit on and her hair and makeup done perfectly. That's just how I was raised. So even for the phone interview, I was dressed to, to the nines to feel my best. So I'm a f firm believer on dressing something you're comfortable in something that shows your personality and something that will make you stand out. So with that being said, for my face-to-face -face interview and for my video interview as well, they were, um, my video interview, I wore a white blouse with like a, pat a patterned skirt and um, my hair in a cute bun with red lipstick to show that I could have the flight attendant look. Um, the blouse that I wore was just like ruffly, but that's me, flirty. Um, I love the color white, Makes me. I think it looks so sleek. My hair pulled back, the red lipstick, just flight attendant look. Now for the um, face to face interview, I kind of went even more into my personality. I went to White House Black Market, they have the cutest things. If you ever need an outfit for an interview, go there, it is perfect. You can always find something. It was a um, blouse kind of like high necked, ruching hair. And then it had lace up here, and then it was, and then it kind of went to a more um, solid material here. But this was see-through right here, and then it went in, and that was my personality. The lace carried on over here. I wore a tank top underneath it, and then obviously it was solid from here down. Wear it with a black skirt, and always, ladies, remember: once you are a flight attendant, that the first day is you wear pantyhose for the rest of your life. So go ahead and step into that role and wear pantyhose. To your interview as well. Um, once again, I didn't, I did not wear red lipstick to the interview. I knew I was going to be there for a long time. Now I've found the perfect red lipstick that can last me literally 24 hours. Um, and I will put that in the description box below as well. But I wore like my nude, um, not this one, but nude pinky, my um, lip color. I wore my hair back, sleeked off my face, like the flight attendant look. And I wore, um, flight attendant heels that I would wear for work. I, they're leather, um, they're not sling backs, they're simple heels. I wore those with my pantyhose and I sat the whole time there like I was a pageant girl. Great posture and all of that. So just do your research, know what you want, know what airline you want to work for. Go ahead and put your resume out there. Apply to 50 different airlines if you want. You never know what's going to be the right fit for you. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are even thinking, remotely thinking, if that thought has ever been in your mind, hey, I would want to be a flight attendant, put your application in. It will be the best decision of your life. I have the most flexible schedule. I can travel anywhere I want in the entire world and I can take pretty much anyone with me. My family gets free benefits. They absolutely love it. They travel more than I do. It's funny. <laughs> um, I get great health benefits. It's the most amazing job. And once you do it, you're never going to want to do another job. Um, so yeah, if y'all have any more questions, DM me on Instagram. I'll put my handle here one more time. Or just reach out to me here. My email is linked up. So just whatever you need to do, comment down below. Ask away. I would love to answer your questions and make your dreams of becoming an airline flight attendant come true. Bye, guys. Love you.